This is Graham Bell. I'm speaking with Oren Katzer, Vice President of Application Engineering at Real Intent. Hi, Oren. Hi, Graham. How are you? Very good. Today, I wanted to talk about clock domain crossing verification. For those in our audience who are not familiar with it, uh, what is CDC verification? Right. So, clock domain verification or CDC is a area of RTL verification. Uh, it's mostly done in RTL, but uh, we're basically checking the correct structure and functionality of signals that are going from one domain to another domain in digital design. The problem is that uh, any other of the verification method, either simulation or static timing, they're not uh, fully aware of the different limitations and uh, constraints that should be applied on clock domain crossings, and therefore they could miss and basically create uh, or, or let in any incorrect structures that will result in metastability or a functional failure. So over the last, I would say, 10 years, tools and methodologies have been developed to cover that area. People are seeing CDC failures on designs that were completely clean at RTL. Right? When they, they go to silicon or sometimes very late in the design cycle, they still see CDC, CDC issues. They go to the RTL, the RTL is clean, and there is, the reason for that is that implementation tools, so everything that's happening post-RTL, could inject glitchy behavior or, or glitchy uh, uh, circuits on the CDC crossings without the designer knowing, ending up in a CDC violation, again, even though the RTL is completely clean. So going back to your question, majority of the verification is done at RTL. However, there are some aspects of the verification that uh, has to be done at Netlist as well. Oren, is CDC verification getting harder in today's modern SOCs? CDC is getting harder not because the basic technology has changed. The basic idea, the basic problem that we described before is still the same, but we're looking at bigger designs. We're looking at SOCs, right? The majority of designs are SOCs where IPs are coming from different design teams internally or externally. Many more clocks, uh, many more configurations that, ha that has to do with uh, lower power and power modes. Uh, and basically it's the same problem, but just bigger, right? Key challenges at least that we were seeing in the field and, and you know, hearing from our users are, uh, around capacity, so just the ability to run CDC, full, full verification of CDC at, at bigger blocks, bigger subsystem, or even SOC level. Uh, it's the sheer amount of violations you get out of the box, right? If I, as a designer, if I run uh, a big block or SOC and I'm getting, you know, 50,000 violations, that's not manageable, you know, how will I review that, right? If I'm getting a smaller number, but, but these are the accurate, the correct errors that I should look at, uh, and it's presented in a very concise, uh, readable way, I can handle it, right? So it's capacity, just amount of violations that you get out of the box, which kind of tied to the amount of noise, because uh, a lot of the flows out there, they, they report everything that should be reported, but then uh, they report 2x or 3x of additional uh, non-real violations, you've got to sip through those. And then the other challenge is getting the constraints right. So basically, given that design, given all those complexities, how do I get to the right definition of all my clocks and the relationships between them? I would say these are, these are key challenges. We talked about Netlist or, or what could happen downstream. That's another challenge. So I would say those are the four key items I'm seeing at least. Real Intent offers the Meridian uh, product for CDC sign-off. Uh, what are some of the key features of uh, Meridian CDC uh, that you like? The tool is, uh, is very high capacity, so as a user I can run it on a small block in a you know, few seconds, I can run it on a bigger IP block in minutes, and I can run it on larger subsystems in you know, half an hour to one hour. And that, that just saves a lot of time because I don't need to split it in black box to different bits and pieces. So I would say capacity, I would say that, that's a, a big thing, at least for me as a user. The amount of noise or accuracy, the errors that a tool reports are, are real issues, or at least issues, issues I would like to see and review. And I don't get too much noise that, you know, when I look at it, I just automatically wave. And that leads to less waivers, which, you know, we're... Generally, I'm, and I think that's our methodology against waivers. Waivers is where you 
going to miss your your next CDC issue. So less noise, less things to review, less items to wave is a good thing. So we have a very uh, large number of checks that have been developed over the years. The tool and, and also our approach is that we, we want to match the, the type of checks that we have in the tool. We, of course, have some recommended set, but to match uh, the checks that we have to the specific methodology. And no one's methodology is the same as, as, as another one, right? So we work with uh, company A, and they have a very uh, clear methodology on how CDC should be checked. And we have the checks to apply, to apply to that, to match that. And then we'll go to another design flow and we can relatively quickly uh, match our checks to the next methodology and so on and so forth. So those I would say the top on my list. Oren, thanks for speaking with us today about CDC verification. Thank you, Graham. Always a pleasure.